Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. In this short video, as part of my pedestal desk series, I'm just going to go through the various router cutters that I've used to do some of the detail on the desk. And I'll go straight into it. Uh, on the end here, we've got a kitchen door set. All these come from Axminster, by the way. And this is uh, product code 666068. Now, for the sides of the pedestals and also the outer sides of the top, I want to give the impression of raised panel work. Now, I'm using veneered MDF for the actual panels. I wouldn't be able to use a panel raising cutter on those to give any uh, impression that the panel's been raised. However, you can use the other uh, parts of a raised panel cutter set to produce quite a, a, a nice looking frame around a plain panel. Uh, and this is uh, uh, an example uh, using my uh, Axminster raised panel cutter, which you would have seen uh, in one of my previous videos. Right, I'm all geared up to put this part of the panel uh, raising cutter set moulding onto all this wood here. And what I've done is I've gone through uh, all this wood. These are the rails and styles for the sides of the pedestals. Uh, and I've chosen which face I want to do the cut on, and I've marked it with a red uh, crayon. And I've done that in each case, and I've stacked them in such a way that when I take them from here, I just take them straight to the router table and use them. And so I don't have to check time and time again where I'm going to do those cuts. There we go, that's the last of those done. And you can see what a beautiful job that makes. Absolutely lovely. Now there are two things we're trying to achieve when we set this rear fence. The first thing is uh, that it has to be set such that uh, the ball bearing, which is between the top cutter and the middle cutter, has to be in line uh, with uh, the face here of the fence. And so I'm going to do that first. The second bit, which is jolly important, is to make sure that the mitre fence is running at right angles uh, to the fence here. And I'm just checking mine, and it is a tiny smidgen out. And the problem is, if it is out, then this fence here, the mitre fence, will be presenting the work at an angle. Now, if your piece of wood is relatively small, like this one, or if you feel nervous, then you could put a clamp like this, uh, Bessie, uh, clamp here uh, on in order to hold your piece of wood so you don't have to get your fingers too close to the cutter. Is because of this arrangement with the cutters, I've got an extra bit of tongue which I have to get rid of, which is here. Uh, because ordinarily when you're using uh, this cutter, uh, you're using stock which is less than 22 millimetres. And I've set up a little jig here so I can cut these extra tongues off very simply. Well, I've removed that extra bit of tongue from there. Uh, Next I have an edge moulding cutter, and this one's part number is 666204, and it's used to do uh, this moulding at the top of the desk and there you can see uh, the profile and it is the absolute perfect shape for the top of a desk. Uh, this is my Tesco uh, and uh, it's a little bit rough piece of uh, walnut but uh, you can see the sort of shape that I'm achieving. And I had a, another Tesco on a piece of Sapili and you can see the effect here and it's absolutely spot on for a desktop. I've then got a, a rounding over cutter here, which is, uh, or an overload cutter, which is 666054, which I've used for any rounding over that I've needed uh, to do. I've got a rebate cutter I've used a couple of times, 
and that's 666163. Um, and of course, these are bearing guided, all of these. My chamfer cutter is bearing guided, and that is uh, 666160. I'm putting a, a chamfer on the outer edges of the uprights of the pedestals. And in order to make sure that these are nice and even, I've set up the router table uh, with a chamfer cutter here. And I've now set this up such that the end of my uh, fence inserts here and here are exactly in the right place. So as long as I get my piece of wood level with the end there and then level with the end there, my chamfer will start and finish in the right place. Now I'm starting short of the end here, going in and then moving it to the end so it's flush there and then gently going along to complete the chamfer. I'm just moving my left hand now so I can detect it when it gets to the end. There it is, flush there, and I move that end away. And that's it, done. And uh, you'll note that all of these, so far, have got half-inch shanks. I've got a whole variety of twin flute cutters, but the one I think I use most uh, was either the uh, 6 or 8. The 8 has a part number of 951230. You can look up the others online, I'm sure. And this is a particularly lovely cutter here. Uh, this one on the end. It's a traditional moulding cutter. And its part number is 666197. And it's what I've used for the bases of the pedestals. And if you look there, you can see that shape, which is at the bottom of all of the pedestals. That's another lovely cutter and not too expensive either. Now for the underside of the top of the desk uh, I've got some 20 millimeter thick wood which I want to have a molding uh, put on and this molding is something which I don't have an individual cutter which will do what I want. So I'm going to do it with two cutters and do it in two goes. I've got a beading cutter here and I've also got a, a panel cutter. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use the beading cutter on a piece of this 20 mil stock to produce this shape. And you can see there's the beading cutter and that's the shape I'm going to produce. Then I'm going to replace uh, the cutter with the panel cutter and put that into the writer table and produce the rest of the moulding shape. And in this way, you can build up quite complicated shapes rather easily. And you don't need to stop at just two cutters. You could use two, three, even five cutters I've seen to make very complicated mouldings. So it's quite a good technique. But you've got to think which order you're going to do it in if it's something complicated. But this one's straightforward. <laughs> You can see the profile there, and that's the correct way up as well, that I'm using it. Another nice combination, that. I'm not covering any of the dovetail uh, bits and pieces in this video. They're covered in the, uh, the lead jig uh, draw-making videos that I've made separately. So let's have a look.